One further topic I wanted to discuss on our continuous random variables is the topic of our CDFs, or our cumulative distribution functions. Uh, so we actually are going to be using our cumulative distribution function a whole lot um, because it takes care for us this whole concept of area under the curve. Okay, so let me show you what this guy looks like. And here is our, so we'll go from 0 to 1. We'll call this our CDF. And we'll put up the same times that we've got. So same scale on our x. So we've got 1, 2, 3, four, five, and six. Okay, so what the, the CDF actually is, is it's essentially, um, it's going to tell us how much area under the curve we have from a specific point and less. And we can, we can actually kind of write it out in a piecewise function just like we did with our PDF. And still A and B are our maximum values. Okay, and here we go. So if we write out our CDF, this is going to be equal to F, capital F of X. And this guy is equal to this particular piecewise function. So it's going to be zero for x being less than a. Down here it's going to be 1 for x greater than b. And then we're going to have this guy. So it's going to be x minus a divided by b minus a. And that is going to be for a less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b. So th this is really an integral. So we're going to basically be graphing the integral. And what this is, is let's go ahead and graph it out. I'll graph it out in uh, blue or something. So what it's going to be is it basically says from 0 to 1, we are 0. And then for uh, for when we're at B or greater, we are going to be at the number one. And then we just got to figure out how to connect these lines. And there's a whole bunch of ways that, that we can make this happen. But remember, the CDF is always the area from one point uh, and everything before it. Uh, that was true with our uh, discrete random variables. It's also true with our continuous random variables. So with this guy, remember, it's always going to be kind of either increasing or flat line. It's not going to go down. Uh, but the shape that it takes to get bigger can be very different for different, uh, for different probability density functions. So for this cumulative density function, uh, what we are going to do is we can kind of graph this. So if we had the value of a, in our case is 1, it would be 1 minus 1 is 0 divided by our uh, divided by our 5 right there, 6 minus 1, and it would be 0. Okay, great. We put a 0. If we did 2, it would be 1 divided by 5. If we did 3, it would be 2 divided by 5, etc., etc. And so for this guy, what we wind up getting is we wind up getting a straight line from our 1 to our 0. Now you're like, OK, how does our CDF help? Well, our CDF helps because what we can say, at any given point, at 5, I could figure out what is the probability of being 5 or less. I could look at the PDF and like, try to figure out this area. Or if I have the CDF, I can just look at the number 5 and grab this value on our graph. And that will tell me what is the probability of getting a 5 or less. Same thing, we do what's the probability of getting a 4 or less. It would be this spot 
right there, and we could figure out what how high it is on the y-axis. So the CDF is extraordinarily useful. Now let's say that I want to know what's the probability, so let me put up another statement, like the probability of our random event, so this is our DMV wait times, is going to be greater than four. Okay, so with our PDF, like since it's uniform, it's super easy, you know, we just go four, five, and six for the event being greater than four. We circle it and we know it's going to be two fifths. Okay, alternatively, what could we do? Remember, we can do one minus something from the CDF to get us greater than. And we're going to have to use this trick all the time uh, coming up um, with like our normal distributions. But so what we could do is this guy, we could either sum it out or we could say that that equals one minus the probability of x being less than or equal to four. Now remember the equal did really doesn't matter. You can have it there, you can leave it out. Um, but we want to know probability of being less than or equal to four, come to our CDF, grab this value, one minus, and it would give you the rest of the area, so going bigger, instead of knowing the probability of being smaller. So we can use like all these tricks that we have used from our discrete random variables. We just got to tweak them just a little bit to work with our continuous random variables. But just know that we still can plot the CDF, and it is very useful uh, so that we can know the probability of being less than or equal to a value. We can know the probability of being greater than or equal to a value, all from kind of manipulations and using our cumulative density function.